intro everybody welcome to the bits and beats podcast i'm your host jared guzman and we have ronnie uh producing but also dropping some words in as well i got a note on the last <laughs> episode ronnie people were What's like that? i didn't even realize there was a third guy until like 20 minutes <laughs> The audio, they were like, they just thought it was Justin laughing again or like his voice sounded Some random guy. Yeah. So on this one, I'll definitely introduce it better. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, that's Ronnie, everybody. He's a, he's a very, very cool dude. We've been working on this thing for a while now. So I feel like I feel like we've bonded and really got to know each other, too. You know? Yeah. It's a beautiful friendship we've begun. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you don't sound excited about it at all, dude. I was just a little bit. Matter of I'm gonna, fact, let's, can we edit your response out of there? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Well, hey, guys. Well, this is the second episode that we're putting out. Um, I was really stoked uh, to have this guest. We have Cheryl Anderson, who I had the pleasure of starting comedy with in Sacramento. And she's hilarious. She's awesome. She is aged into a fine wine. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get... I always think everything's going to cancel me. You know, I'm never going to say that again. I'm, she's yeah. a fine wine, Cheryl, when you hear this. Um, and we talk about how she kind of sort of broke into a lot of commercial acting work, um, not in L.A. or New York, which is sort of a different path to go. But she's actually doing it in Minnesota, in Minneapolis specifically. And with that, we taped this episode back in March. So we, we also discuss some of the George Floyd, Derek Chauvin stuff that was going on out there and, and the protesting and the, all that stuff. So if you hear that and it's July, it's not like we just miss talking about it. We're like, dude, you know what? We don't talk about enough <laughs> protesting back in March, <laughs> the Derek Chauvin case. Yeah. Like we're just obsessed with it. It's like, it's like when everyone moves on, like there's like an alien sighting and everyone just moves on, you know, and we're the guys who just get obsessed for the rest of our lives. <laughs> yeah. Like, was it or was it not an alien? <laughs> you make podcasts about it. Yeah, we make a podcast. This whole podcast, every episode, we bring up the Derek Chauvin trial. <laughs> um, I'm uh, making light. I know it's a serious thing, but all right. So <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> yeah, Cheryl, Cheryl's super funny. We... Uh, we role play some commercial acting in this in this episode as well, which is was really fun. And then Ronnie got us to role play a little scene in the bar with Cheryl approaching me. So tune into that and see how yeah. awkward we get as well. Um, but yeah, we do get into it. We get pretty serious in this one at the end of it. So if you want to see the serious side of myself and Cheryl, you know, stay tuned all the way to the end. Um, that being said to everybody, we have exclusive content that's uh, on the Patreon. It's patreon.com dash bits and beats or slash bits and beats, whatever with that. What, the one that backslash. does the angle backslash patreon.com backslash bits and beats. <laughs> and angle. yeah, you know what I'm talking about if you're listening. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention, yeah. dude, because it's audio. Mm -hmm. I realized during Cheryl's episode, you know how we have her do facial expressions? Oh, yeah. We haven't. We didn't. <laughs> Dude, I realized that in the audio. So everyone in the audio, you can watch the video of Cheryl's face on the YouTube channel, Bits and Beats. Or uh, actually, it's on my YouTube channel, J.R. de Guzman. But um, the full episode is on there. And if you're wondering what the hell are these guys laughing at, that's where you can find it. We promise to be more conscious of the audio listener. Yeah, in the, in in the future, future what I'll do is I'll describe what their face is doing. I don't know how you would even describe. Would you describe Cheryl's face there? Uh, let me try it right now so you guys know. Oh, look, Cheryl's uh, just giving me the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she's giving she's me giving the me eyes. the eyes. Right giving now, me a what's happening? <laughs> sultry eye look. And she's a fine wine. <laughs> how many times can you say fine wine before it's creepy the first time oh okay just once yeah. well, that's good to know that's why i have you here yeah uh all right i think that's everything let's just get into it then enjoy the episode everybody and if you hear a third voice that's ronnie everything's cleared up let's do it I walk a ton. I walk like 10 miles a day. Mm. Wow. And yoga. You know, I noticed like um, 
a lot of a lot there's so many beautiful women in Minnesota. You know, I'm sure that my the the oh man, I see I'm such a bad overshare, but this girl that I really like in Minnesota, she's beautiful, she's great. But th- there's so many beautiful girls in Minnesota. What is <laughs> what is that? What is that out there? Uh, What's there's what, a, well, like, there's a lot of Scandinavians here. People yeah. tend to think that's a good look. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Handsome men too. Yeah, I noticed that too. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I appreciated all your guys' beauty. Um, yeah, I, I guess there's like a bunch of Scandinavian people out there. Um, well, okay. So when you since you've been back to Minnesota, like. I'm interested in this for people who are like trying to do commercials not in LA and New York. You know, I'm, I'd imagine there's going to be people listening to this who are in the entertainment industry but don't want to live in LA and New York. Yeah. So, how have you been just like getting, like, how did you even start approaching that? Well, through industry the agencies out there? here, I got new headshots, and then there's several agencies in town that are pretty busy. Like, Target does a lot of their ads here. Hmm. And, but I finished, they like, they like standups and they like people with improv experience. So when I was out in yeah. LA, I did, I went through UCB, I did the UCB courses yeah. for second, third, and then everything shut down. So then I finished up the fourth one over Zoom mm-hmm. just earlier last year. Yeah, so I think that a lot helps of too to have that stuff on your resume. The improv. Yeah, yep. improv and stand up, and you have a great look for doing commercials too. Like, I mean, you're like a good looking person, you know. Like most comics are just like hideous, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 like, did you ever feel like going into a club, like you know, you're like, wow, I'm like a ten in this world? Did you ever feel that? <laughs> no, never. Literally I didn't set you never. up very well for that. It's like I'm setting no. you up to be very cocky and like hated right there. Did you like love yourself, Cheryl? You can do it. <laughs> No, it was really hard. You know, being this tall and being a kid is really hard. You probably stand out everywhere you go. I, I, and I hate being the center of attention, which is weird doing stand up too. But I just so fun. I, I, I totally hate. get that though. Yeah, I get that. And it's hard to blend in. There's more tall people here, but yeah, it's mm-hmm. so yeah. I was always really awkward, and I was a nerd. And- okay, so if you're, you're tall, you're a nerd. What was like your transformation? Like, I'm. I mean, from. Like, were there awkward phases as a kid that you, like, developed humor or developed whatever? You know, like, how did how did Cheryl come from? You're, like, the awkward nerd, and I don't see that as much today, to, like, you're an outgoing comedian. Huh, that's funny, because I still feel like an awkward nerd. So funny, yeah. I, yeah, and I feel I'm introverted. I have a hard time doing the networking stuff and all that. Sure. And, you know, like, in, in L.A., everybody is so beautiful. Like mm. the people that, are, and so like in LA, I'm offered like a nursing home resident or, <laughs> you know, yeah, Alzheimer's patient or something like those are the <laughs> yeah. <part. laughs> yeah. For here, I'm getting more like, you know, cool grandma yeah. kind of stuff. <laughs> so that's yeah. better. I-, I was just thinking of like, I have this soundboard thing and I want to see if we can like make a commercial or something. Let me see what sounds we have. Like, what's a what's a commercial that you've done recently? Like a you don't have to say the brand, but like, is it a car thing or like a? I shoe was thing? a no. It was a health uh, healthcare. I think I can say that. I had yeah. to be sad and tired and old. Do you talk at all? <laughs> I cried. I cried for like ten minutes. The whole shoot was just me oh. crying. Oh wow! <laughs> wow, you and you did it. Oh, I could. I could cry like that. Oh my that. god. Can, Commercial can, acting uh, is so much more demanding than it used to be. It just yeah, ugly, snotty, teary cry. I can do it in a wow. second. Yeah. That's so I'm good. I'm a very okay. sad person. <laughs> it's uh hey. Um exploit that, you know? Exploit your <laughs> yeah, pain. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let me see if we can uh No, nah, that's too upbeat. I'm trying to find I don't have anything sad. I mean... <laughs> that's not sad. That's right. <laughs> 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 Can you can you do like do you have like go to looks like in your commercials like if I put on the music and as an ad for like a pill um let's say like depression or something no that's not depression <laughs> what 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 is, what is this a, a I, oh, I want to do Cialis I want to do Cialis so bad I want to yeah, get those Cialis. bathtubs yeah <laughs> can you can we do a Cialis commercial do you sure. have a look for Cialis like <laughs> is this... <laughs> It's so simple. My, and it, really? 
Is that all you got? <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me talk over it. Let me see. Let's see if you can do that. Okay. Um, how do they? How do they usually introduce these? It's like, uh, is your dick soft? <laughs> no, no, they don't. I don't think they just say dick in these, huh? Having trouble in the bedroom, fellas. <laughs> I can't even look at you. Pharmaceutical <laughs> commercial like that. Yeah, I know. Okay, it's not a pharmaceutical. It's one that's like this. This boner pill has not been tested in America. It's been tested in like a lot of like third world countries, and they're just down releasing it to college students. That's what this boner pill is. Yeah, I own it. I have it. It's like a pre roll ad for porn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's totally that. Like the porn's about to start and you're like, skip ad, but like you've been watching so much porn, you're kind of interested in seeing this. Okay. If it's for nice. college students though, like would you want like your mom or your grandma like being like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> we're in a certain section of the website. We're in a ver- yeah, we're in a specific category of this. Because you know, there's step-mother? all the like step... Yeah, stepmother porn. <laughs> All right, step. Well, we, okay, we both jumped right on that, didn't we? Yeah, step, <laughs> stepmother boner pill commercial. We're, we're we're finding this. We're finding this. Hey, your stepmom's looking real good, but she's been around the block. Can you satisfy her all night? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my bad. I broke. Cut. That was my bad. That was my bad. Ronnie, Ronnie, was, Ron, Ronnie looks like the director too right now. With like, yeah. <laughs> I was so in it. I was so. In he it. was really in it. Like you look like you're checking multiple cameras. You know, like. <laughs> all right, we need the lights up in uh, camera three. I liked where that was going. Sh- Cheryl, you're a pro at this. <laughs> I underestimated your commercial skills. Should we get back in it one more time? Hey, fellas, your stepmom's looking lonely. Where's your dad? I think she's gonna need you to step in. Now we got ya. But she's been around the block and she's gonna need you to take her on a rodeo. Can you take that challenge? With step bro pills. Not tested in America. Side effects include diarrhea, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Enjoy. I felt good. That was great. Take you, yeah. take you around the rodeo? Is that what you said? <laughs> you know, I didn't do as many improv classes as you, Cheryl. <laughs> they didn't tell me what to say. Yeah, I said I don't know why I said rodeo. I was like, I just didn't want to say the same thing I said before. Well, because it's, it's, not, it's not my first rodeo. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's not her first rodeo. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. There's, there's so many questions rodeo. I want to ask you as a friend there. <laughs> and then, but then, as a as a podcast host, uh-huh. different questions. You know, wouldn't be wouldn't be appropriate. Maybe. What What was your like? Did you party? Were mm-hmm. you a partier? Oh boy, was I? Yep. Can we talk about that? Oh, well, she lit up there. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, step bro. She's partied before. Are you ready to party with an experienced party? Okay. We don't have it. What's the name for that boner pill? The step bro pill, you said. Step bro step pill. Bro. Yeah, that felt right. Step bro. Do you have guys like hit on you after the shows? Like, you know, because you know how you do the, um, you do this bit. I don't want to like tell it on here, but, but like the thing with like the cookies and the van. It's like. Or the, the Xbox. A... Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Like I would imagine that like opens up something where like maybe, maybe some dude's going to be like, yeah, I got a shot. <laughs> well, it's a weird kind of fetish thing, the older woman thing, mm-hmm. you know, that it's, I think it's like a bucket list or whatever for a lot of guys. They want that experience. Sure. I could see for that. For some reason. Really? I don't. <laughs> really? I, I honestly don't understand it. Well, we just did that whole step bro thing, you know, it's a thing. It's out there for sure. Yeah, I guess. So like, have you like, is there ever, I'm just, I bet it, it's got to, you know. Yeah, for sure. well, somebody well, wanting to to do that. Robert, <laughs> Robert Berry know, loves can, to my, tell the story. After Comedy Spot, a guy came up to me and said, "Thanks for the weird boner." <laughs> what? All You're right. Welcome. I guess. That, I think that's a good start. I think that's a good starting point for something. Thanks um, for the weird boner. Yeah, let's Soccer make a beat mom. on thanks. Thanks for a weird boner. 
Sí. Ah. Let's see, what do we do here? Um, so, sure, I'm, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer, like, different instruments. And what, we, what we've been experimenting with is, like, laying, layering each instrument and then talking in between. So, I don't know what feels like a weird boner song. Is that in a major key or in a minor key? <laughs> like, does that feel happy or sad? I think it's happy. It's happy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, that one's too happy. All right, let's try. That's, let's see. <laughs> That's like powerful. That one's powerful. We're going to pick from a few progressions here. So that's a C major seven. That's like, it's like a that's a weird boner, <laughs> right? Yeah, makes you question you know, yourself a little bit. Yeah, I think what would help is. <laughs> <laughs> did you keep talk? Like, did did that go anywhere? Did like you pr- like? No, no, because no. I'm not. I'm not looking for that. You know. Yeah, especially if you open up with "Thanks for the weird boner." Yeah. <laughs> what did you say to that? Thank you. You're welcome, I guess. Yeah. Like at that point, if he just has a weird boner, like it's not, you know what I mean? Your boners don't change. I've never seen my boner be different. Like I think it was more the the um you, you know, the creation of it. <laughs> what what the like creation. <laughs> how the, the <laughs> <laughs> boner analysis is amazing. <laughs> Well, really, what we're, he was speaking of was what inspired the boner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. I got to figure out what timing this is in. Boner is definitely like a, it's a very specific alleyway of a topic. Boners are limiting. <laughs> I, I, it's, yeah, yeah, we can only go a certain way. So maybe we got to <laughs> expand on this, not just boners. So it was this guy saying, thanks for the weird boner. Maybe it's like a, maybe it's about like approaching a woman, you know, guys don't really know how to like approach girls very well. Well, and especially somebody that's their mom's age, if that's what mm-hmm. that seems to be what they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Like I guess if don't. yeah, if you were to be approached and you want, let's say like you know you're out and you're like a, a single lady and you are older than the, a younger guy and like maybe both people will be fulfilling some kind of thing there. How would you like? What's the ideal way to be approached in that situation? If that makes sense, like let's say you're giving me advice. I met I met somebody and wanted to do this. Okay, so it's not me because, like I said, I don't get it. So, so there's that rule, right? You I mean, you totally your... could, though, Cheryl. Come on, you could totally get it? kill. It. I could you know get I mean? it. You're, you're a beautiful <laughs> okay. lady. Get it? Come on. <laughs> I don't. I just don't want to. I don't want this to end where it's like you. You know, you think. You know, like because I, I. You know, you could totally get it, Cheryl. <laughs> I, I, okay. <laughs> And I'm saying I that don't understand. I don't understand way. it. Let me put it that way. I don't understand it. Yeah, but there's like the rule, you have like the, you t- the nerd, the nerd thing from a kid, like the awkward thing. But like, use it. Who's that lady? You're a hot lady, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Accept it. Uh, okay. No. All right. So the rule Anyways. you like divide your yeah. age by half and then add seven, right? Isn't that the rule about what? I think so. About yeah. Oh, that's good because that's legal for me still. Because there's certain oh. ages where that's not even, yeah. Okay, so divide your age by half and add seven, and that's if you're like twenty. If you're a twenty, yeah, it's no longer. It's like right on the cusp. Okay, so so <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, it's not. It's so not, a twenty-two yeah, year right. old could date an eighteen year old. I say on the cusp, but the like older it's a you get, the older you get, the bigger that span is. So yeah. I'm sixty. I could date a thirty-seven year old. So having mm. like twenty-five mm. year olds, that's just like. That's way too, way too, not that it wouldn't be enjoyable to have a 25 year old maybe, but it's just, I just don't, I don't understand what they're looking for out of it. I don't get it. Unless they just think yeah. that there's be just like so much experience happening. And that's here. a very wise <laughs> thing to say. Cause it's like, what, what's, what do you get out of that too? Of just like what, like teaching a young man how to fumble his way through sex or like a dating thing. You know, I used um, to say, I used, sometimes I would do a joke about being like the Bull Durham of stand up. Like, you know, that movie, like every season she took like a promising young rookie, like find a promising young open mic or every season. Oh, that's and so Teach amazing. him to be patient. And, yeah. Yeah. 
I guess it's kind of fun to think about. But I <laughs> <laughs> the bull Durham of stand up. I love it. Yeah. So it's probably better than to. Um, for you to, <laughs> this sounds so weird. There's no way, to, like, I'm going to get you canceled, Cheryl. Everyone that's been on this <laughs> podcast, I feel like this is going to get canceled in some way. But so it's almost like better for you to be the aggressor than, because it sounds like just any young dude approaching you probably would not have, like, be able to say the right thing. Well, because it's, yeah, because there's like a maternal thing and that's just weird and creepy and that's not, that doesn't seem like healthy. You know, I did go, so they they did like cougars and cub nights back in at, California. Like at the at, club? At bars. And I went just to wow. watch, just to see, because I wanted to see what happened. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. the women, and the women were the aggressors at that. Yeah. I guess it's like, hmm, I've, I've been, I've been approached by a few like, like, like older women at shows. Yeah. And, um, I bet you have, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like what happened. It's, it was always, I don't know. I guess like they were the aggressors in a way. And if there was any fun for me, it'd be like, I'm just, I just never fully know. I'm not good at knowing when a girl's into me. I'm very much like, I think I'm, I'm still have the insecure thing from when I was in high school and grade school. And like, I like girls weren't into me. Like I'd have to, I'd have to like the girls would be into me over a span of time. It like three months in, they're like, okay, I guess he's a good guy, you know. But Once it was they never get to like, know you? Uh -huh. yeah, exactly. Like they, they've, they, they, then they'll start to see who I am. But oh, so the initial so like meeting thing, <laughs> <laughs> the initial initial meeting thing, I'm still working on, you know. But um, yeah. So like, I guess the nice thing like that is like. The um the confidence a, a woman who knows what she wants in those situations she knows what mm. the fuck she wants <laughs> yeah not messing like around the 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 hunt so okay so let me let me try to let me see if we can lay down this one while we're all still on here I'm gonna lay down some bass. This is this is a weird um a weird beat. <laughs> <laughs> it's like happy and then it becomes kind of sad. Let's try I'm going to try to record some vocals over that. It's so like maybe it's about um younger guys who like older ladies? Does that feel right, Cheryl? It seems how it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems I think it's like about how it's gone. women knowing what the hell they want now. <laughs> yeah i guess and like like uh, older women if they're into that if they're out looking for a young guy they just yeah they're not going to waste time they're not looking for a long-term relationship yeah they just totally. want what you got now <laughs> yeah now. there's a timing thing involved cougars and the cops cops and the cougars how's that let's try that <laughs> cougars and the cops cops and the cougars we ain't wasting time That feels right. Feels that feels good. right. I like that. <laughs> that feels good. Does it, do you think that the whole cougar thing, that, that seems like that's such a, I don't know. Do people still use that word? I don't know if they do. Cougars and cup. Yeah, what do they use now? I don't, I don't know. Just When you use it on stage, you use it on stage, right? I, I, uh, I, I haven't for a while. Well, I haven't done any comedy for a while, but. Yeah, I guess I probably still will. It just seems like it's like an does, old does word. Does it still work? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have to, well, offer, I guess... I have to offer PS5s now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny to like update a bit over time. You know, it's like used to be whatever. And then now yeah. it's like, yeah, PS5s. Yeah. The, the <laughs> <laughs> what you're, one day you're going to be saying like virtual reality video I games. Know. and uh, yeah. Still doing the yeah, same you. crappy jokes. Cougars <laughs> and cubs. Cubs and the cougars. All right, um, sure, I'm gonna add one more. Cougars, cougars and the cubs. Let me see if I can add a harmony to that. Cougars and the cubs, cubs and the cougars. We ain't wasting time. You better just do her. All right, it's coming together. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add a little. I think we're just gonna have to keep the cougars and cubs. Um, yeah. For the, it feels, whoa, sure. that's a lot of, it's a lot of reverb. So now what we're doing is we're adding some reverb to this to make it a little sexy. Let's see how that sounds. 
I think that feels good. Cougars and Cubs. Um, so what, what we do, Cheryl, is... Oh, shoot, this sounds weird. <laughs> what we usually do is uh, we'll... I'll make the chorus here, and then I got to come back. I'm going to come back and, like, finish the song based off of the chorus. So, yeah. And then you'll have, like, a full-blown track. We might we might take stuff from the interview. I don't know. We're, we're still figuring that out. Okay. Um, let's do a little role-playing, Cheryl, if you don't mind. Let's say you are... You are, let's say you're a cougar on the prowl and okay. um, there, there's yeah. a guy, <laughs> there's a guy, you're at, let's say you're at the cougar and cubs, right? You're very good okay. at the acting chops in this whole thing. So it's kind of <laughs> okay. fun to yeah. around with that. All right. And uh, let's say JR is a, is, a, is a person you would like to approach, but you want to explain what's about to go down and, you know, what you have to offer and that you don't have enough this is something we have to make a decision quickly here. Oh, is it like a high pressure situation? What's no, it's not high pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, you know. So it's basically just like the approach. We're seeing how exactly. the approach gets done. Exactly. So how would how would that how would that go about? Because I feel like this would be used um Do we during want background verses. music? Maybe we're at the club. No, 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 no. Are you Jay? Are you there with a the drink? A drink in your hand <laughs> at the bar. Oh yeah. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just like <laughs> Oh hey. <laughs> Sorry, I just I'm just like so young and dumb. <laughs> and drunk? Are you drunk? I'm drunk. How I'm many? Just young, dumb and drunk. See, I'd probably pass that one by because, you know, he might not be able to perform if he's had too True. much to drink. Oh, man. I'm just like young and virile. Just getting started. <laughs> oh, this is just water. <laughs> oh, this is just water, Gatorade, and protein. Yeah. Good. Hydrate. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I've never liked about the women my age is they just don't know what they want. You know what I mean? Play too many games, don't they? I'm so many so, games. I'm so over games. Oh yeah. Whoa. <laughs> so really? over. Oh. I know exactly what I want. What do you want? And I think you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I just can't, yeah. you guys. <laughs> Brought to you by <laughs> Step Bro Pill. <laughs> Brought to you by Step Bro Pill. <laughs> well, Cheryl and I have too much of like a good, good friendship. It's it is. Yeah, it's too weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's my it was fault. fun. It was fun. Let's do. Uh, so we also do like some musical storytelling on here, Cheryl. So we'll like all you do just like play some keys, and um, we can just like tell tell a story as well. Hmm. Tell a story. I always feel like a fun bombing story is a good area. A fun dating story, we've done a few of those. Um, or like maybe like a audition thing, you know? I don't like talking about bombing. I get way too anxious. It's funny how many people like think it's going to be so funny. They're like, oh, let's talk about bombing. And then I just like, and then I get really sad. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like that. Yeah, I don't like that. Oh, okay, I. Uh, how about I had to, it was for... Um, some kind of pill. You know, I'm, I'm always yeah. doing pill auditions, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Health. But it was the person is swimming. So you um, mm -hmm. have to wear a swimsuit to the audition. But I went into the audition room and just immediately started taking off my clothes. Because <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, you know, wear your swimsuit. You're going to be in your swimsuit for the audition. So I walked yeah. in and just started taking off my clothes and they were like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not that kind of audition. But That's then eventually, awesome. ah, eventually then we were all in our swimsuits, supposed to be pretending like we're out at a, a California pool party. Mm -hmm. Bunch of old people in their swimsuits. And then one of the other old guys in his swimsuit grabbed me. So he's just wearing like his little Speedos. Uh -huh. And then we're supposed to be acting like we're having fun at the party, and he just came and grabbed me, oh. and 
that, that this I is wasn't part of okay the part of the that. commercial he did this for the audition for the audition oh, what? yeah okay. it was creepy yeah jeez what was speaking this commercial of, for? is it for a pool party speaking of weird boners um yeah it was for <laughs> is a weird boner it, is, it was for weird. um pool toys <laughs> oh wow okay yeah i did not get the commercial because i i wasn't acting like i was having fun at the pool party because i stopped having fun <laughs> yeah at the pool party that is really like fucking weird for someone to yeah. just well, that. because you're supposed to, like, you know, in acting, right? Like, you get, you set your boundaries and your ground rules. Like, I wouldn't just go and assume that I can just grab somebody. I would ask them first, ask if I can touch them or whatever, you know. You better ask before you touch. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then how much touching yeah. is okay. Yeah. I had a really good conversation about consent yesterday. Um... But yeah, so it, you know it's funny because like people try to act naturally doing that thing. So that guy probably does that in his regular life. He probably thinks it's okay. Yeah, maybe. So, but, yeah. And and so it would be people that you knew, like at a party. I guess you'd go grab your friends. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't. Yeah, no, for, I don't do that either. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're so nice that you're like. I mean, I think it was probably this is totally normal, but no. <laughs> Okay. Uh. Cheryl, you've been. No, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say you've been touched, but that's like not. It feels too much. Um, what in Minneapolis right now? The comedy scene and everything, like, and the acting stuff. Like, what do you kind of want to do? What's your plan like coming out of the pandemic? If I can get enough work here, so I've got a lease here until September. Mm -hmm. So if I can get enough, I'm hoping I can get enough work here. I'm going to Arkansas next month. Cool. And then, yeah, Shows? so I've got two weeks booked next month. And then, yeah, I'm I'm ready to get on the road again. But if I can get commercial work here and acting work that keeps me busy, because it pays better right now, too. It's, it does seem like, I mean, especially the commercial money is good, like, to keep you, you know, it's like, I feel like sometimes one gig can cover you for the whole month. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Just um, one day. I'm gonna keep doing oh, stand up just because I like it so much. Yeah, like how was the it's last? Fun. What was the last show you did on stage, and how was it like? Um, oh, just last how, night. How's it been back being on? Oh, last night. Where was it at? At Mall of America. House House of Comedy. Yep, it was a show called Day Drinking with Mom. Okay. So it was because because things are so weird here right now. There weren't a lot of people there because there's still curfews and stuff. Isn't it like seven o'clock now? It was seven. Now it's last night. It was ten. Jeez. Depends on depends on what suburb you're in. And I then next saw, week it's going to be a whole different thing. I don't know. Just depending on how, like protesting and all that well, stuff. Well, how the trial goes and when the verdict comes in and all that, you know. For sure. Oh man, I haven't. You know, I am not proud of. I've I, all the last few th weeks and things. I've been not tuned into the news as much because mm -hmm. it like adds so much stress into my day and for like my mental health that. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I'm just like a really sensitive person to it all, but it's like I can't even go live my life. Yeah. Yeah, I've been avoiding it too. Yeah, so like I wonder like how do you how do you balance it with like still being informed? You know, like I I want to be responsible and informed yeah. and whatever, but Right. like not let it run my life too. Right. I I don't want to because I've got that privilege of not really having to pay that close of attention to it because it really sure. doesn't affect my day-to-day -day life, which is, mm -hmm. you know, so that makes me feel guilty too. Yeah. But I yeah. don't want to be, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to be uninformed. And then if they're like, you know, when there's curfew or something, then I'd be out there just all happy, stupid, like what's going on <laughs> if I'm not watching sure. the news or, you know, but we mm -hmm. get like, uh, yeah. like, you know, when you get an Amber alert, when your phone alarm mm -hmm. goes mm -hmm. off, We've been getting yeah. those to tell us about the curfew. I remember during the George, George Floyd protests watching the Minneapolis, like there was all these live stream cameras on every news station and on like Reddit streams. Mm -hmm. Is it, what is the actual like in-person feel out there right now? Like right now, everything feels pretty quiet here. There's like, um, you know, still some protests in some like the suburb Brooklyn center where the last shooting was. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty quiet right now, I think. But it does feel like people are a little bit... You can't help but be a little on edge because things are boarded up like you're... 
the yeah. coffee shops, just the just normal things it, that you do day to day is yeah. Cause you can tell you that people are preparing like, for yeah. whatever's going to happen. I remember during the election, I was in Boston uh, visiting my brother and seeing all the businesses boarded up mm -hmm. and nothing was happening, but it is just a constant reminder every year going of like what the situation is. Yeah. Yeah. And is is I mean, Minneapolis is fairly like, uh, fairly like liberal too, right? Yeah, the city of Minneapolis is especially liberal. The state is overall, but um, oh, more out in the rural areas, it's more conservative. Sure. But the city is is very liberal. Yeah. Yeah, that stuff is so so wild, and um, I don't know. It's crazy that like Minneapolis has become this epicenter the last year for it's sort of crazy. like a. Yeah. Like the issue of race and yeah. um, specifically that whole situation. Yeah, I, I'm still trying to figure it out. There was like a video released today of people comparing how cops um, handled, you know, Dante Wright and George Floyd mm -hmm. versus like, did you did you see there's the video of like the, they were arresting like a, I think it was like a 61 year old white guy in a truck. Oh, and yeah. And the guy gets He's his- ran. Yeah, the guy's like the cop is still like attached to the truck through the window, like hanging on, and the guy yeah. just drives off. And they didn't like they showed like restraint and all that stuff. And yeah. um, no guns went off. No guns went off. Yeah, it's it's interesting because like I th yeah I don't I just see stuff like that and then it just it kind of um, you can't help you know it just it becomes so like in your face of like there is a big difference yeah. for sure. Yeah, and you need to be aware of it because I think so many people, if if they're not subjected to it, they don't think it exists. They're like, "Well, that's never happened to me." I know, and it's it's a uh, it's such a hard, it's a hard conversation to have, but I think it's like, yeah, it's it's and it's a weird way that we receive it through these like short videos on social media now too, because mm -hmm. like you kind of yeah. have to make it like a how do I feel about this within fifteen seconds. Yeah. But yeah. I think just talking it out is good more and more and stuff because yeah, I do have some friends who are like very much like don't they they think it's all propaganda. Mhm. Mm in a way, but Yeah. I don't know. It's such a strange situation. Yeah. Let's talk about boners again. <laughs> I know. I it was just something I mean, I feel like because you're in Minneapolis, I wanted to No, no, it's good. Yeah, and I used to think like, Minnesota because you're in Minneapolis, was different, I wanted to you know? see how it's going out out there. Yeah. I was kind of judgmental about sure. other places where there's more racism, and and I thought Min I thought Minnesota was different, and I guess I was just being naive, and maybe because it wasn't as um, people weren't as open about it, maybe it was more like you know underground or something mm -hmm. here. Yeah, I, don't know. I think I remember it was the first time I went out there. I was doing a college, and I remember it being very diverse, even with like immigrants. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of like immigrants from it was like the Middle East, Asia, yeah. um, and like different countries in Africa, and it was just like this. Was, I think this was like in the downtown area or something too. But then people would say almost like there was the opposite reaction of it too, where like there is there are a lot of immigrants, but then the people who don't want immigration are very like that almost rubs them the wrong way that they're seeing like immigrants every day or something. So maybe that's yeah. what it is. Is like the other shoe drops. Maybe so people are overreacting or reacting to, mm -hmm. yeah. Because historically, the you know it's liberal and there's been the churches have been really active here, bringing in refugees and sponsoring mm -hmm. refugee communities. I was wondering what that what the history of that was. So that's been my understanding anyway. So yeah, it, I would I would move to Minneapolis. I mean, all, all this like you know stuff being said, like I did really have. I, I feel like I enjoyed the vibe out there, and it was like. There was a, um, there was like a, everyone was really welcoming, I felt like. There was like a good, warm sort of like community feel when I was there. Yeah, that's been, like Minnesota nice is a thing. That's like a slogan that, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're getting really bad publicity now and there's bad, terrible things going on. Yeah. But we have, we had a reputation of being a friendly, welcoming place. Well, it's kind nice of people. like... On the same topic, it was like Charlottesville. Do you remember the? Um, they're yeah. famous now for all the tiki torch uh, alt right yeah. guys. Yeah. But 
uh, my cousin was like, they're not even that kind of town at all. They just decided to meet in Charlottesville, and now Charlottesville has this, like, tainted name. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad. It's, it's, these are always, like, hard conversations to have. It's never, like, a fun, you know, like, comedy conversation. But it's, yeah. like, it, this, this stuff is interesting to talk about because I, like, I feel like, uh, like, my Instagram, I remember I posted one video one video that had anything to do with like the black lives matter movement it was the this george the song about george floyd and it was crazy how many people unfollowed me how many people like just had all these like controversial comments to say and like somebody even took on my youtube video of it commented like oh how are you guys believing this he's totally just doing it for the money as if i made money putting out this video on youtube and um, it's it was wild to me how many people think that, but also it's like, as a comic, sometimes like people don't want to hear your like opinion in that way. They just want to hear you like make them laugh. And I think right. maybe because of that, I'm actively like, oh, I want to talk about this a little bit. Yeah. Well, you've got a platform. You know, it's like the shut up and dribble thing. Like, oh, with LeBron. Well, yeah, and you Is know, that who did, or any of them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember who the it was like a, I don't remember who the news person was that said it, but. It's so dismissive, and just because you have a certain career, you still have the right to have an opinion about politics and sure whatever's going on yeah. in the world, you know. And if you have a platform, then you can reach people and and influence what what you know what they think. Totally. So, and I, yeah. I I do take the responsibility of okay, not everyone's going to like this opinion, so they can leave. And I have to yeah. like if I say that, you know, I have to make that decision. Because right. there is also a path where it's like, I don't talk about any of this stuff and I, I, I don't, you know, and I think that's fine, but yeah, I don't, I just, I want to be able to everywhere I go, just be honest, you know? Yeah. And authentic. Otherwise that's kind of how you end up in these weird like Cosby situations where it's like, oh, we're all caught off guard by this thing because he, yeah. he really could only show a certain amount of his, he wasn't his being life. Himself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or what, it's like you know, it's like oh. Shane Gillis, the Shane Gillis thing. You're you're opening for Shane Gillis coming up, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Where the reason I think that was really good for him is like all the people who really like love him now, like love all these aspects of him, as opposed to like where they would just see one sliver of who he is. Yeah. And I've been oh. I've been trying to be more open and understanding too about listening to maybe people that have different opinions from me. Mm -hmm. to understand where they're coming from and because before i would be more dismissive myself too just be like uh you're wrong stop talking i don't want to hear it yeah yeah so i've been trying to listen more and say okay wh why do you feel that way why do you think like that and you know because otherwise how are we ever gonna make any progress if i we agree just keep getting more and more divided where it's just gonna keep getting yeah. worse and worse yeah it's like there's the difference between, you know, let's say someone's conservative, someone's liberal, and having this conversation where you're just both trying to convince each other that you're yeah. right, right, versus talking and trying to find some, like, get closer to the truth yeah. with your differences. Yeah. And I think, like, that's the conversations I like participating in, as opposed to the other one is just so draining. Like, I'm just like, oh, let's not even talk about this topic. Yeah. Because you're probably, yeah. you're not going to change somebody's mind. But maybe you can just understand each other and say, like, well, I understand why you think that way, mm -hmm. you know, and then maybe eventually find some middle ground. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I hope I think so. And I hope so. I, you know, I'm, I'm I lean definitely more like liberal, but living mm -hmm. in Placer County in uh, north of Rose, north of Sacramento yeah. was very much a very conservative county. And it was good for me because I was in an L.A. bubble. And I think being out there and surrounded by it all the time, I could kind of see where I had blind spots of like, yeah, I'm being hypocritical about what I'm saying from like a, a liberal side, and that was helpful for me. But um, but I also try to like have my own boundaries of like, call other call people out where they're being hypocritical, like on the other other side or something. I don't yeah. even like that there's sides. Also, I hate that. Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> like. Because because sometimes I feel like the second you say that you're from a certain tribe, mm -hmm. there's like a lot of people who just automatically subscribe to everything without questioning. Like, yeah, 
and make assumptions about because and there are really most people aren't people. like all on one side or all on the other there's maybe like a mix of totally their feeling beliefs it's like yeah it's so nuanced like it, no one no one is just you know like christian for example like i got i got baptized what 2019 and i think when i i'm afraid to say that sometimes to people because i think they're going to be like like the there's one version of christian that they see like you hate gays no sex yeah. before marriage, all this other stuff. Yeah. Like I threw in no sex before marriage for sure. Just letting people know like I'm totally down. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally down. That one is very important to me. That's the thing where, that's the thing I stand Good. firm on. Yeah, all this stuff where it's like we're all just humans going through it every day with our own problems and good stuff. It's like there's not just yeah, I'm this, I'm I'm conservative and this is exactly what I, like not all conservatives are racist and that's a mm-hmm. big stereotype that yeah. you probably get for being a conservative, if not saying you're conservative, but anybody. Right, yeah, yeah, I'm more liberal too. And yeah. and also when you're like out in LA or something, you know, where pretty much everybody you talk to is of the same mindset, you start thinking like, well, everybody thinks like this just because all the people you talk to do, so. yes. There's so many conversations I've had with people in LA or just in our entertainment industry who are like, who could, so this is the thing, who could ever vote for Trump? How could you ever like him? It's like 50% of the country did. Yeah. And they're, 50% of the country aren't complete idiots. Right. Like, uh, I mean, I'm not on. like, yeah, there's something going on. And it's like, they, they don't think that they're racist. I think it's like, I, I'm not justifying like any of the, the shitty stuff of like Trump or anything, but it's like, it helps me just see people as humans instead of like, if you voted for Trump, I'm never going to be your friend. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, like, but people, people who say like, because they're surrounded by people who only agree with them. So I think if you believed anything other than this, you must be crazy. Yeah. It's never true. I think we're making progress here. I think we are. Yeah. (laughs) It's got, this got very deep. Yeah. Um, this part of it. So let's just like, Let's cue back in a little bit of uh Cougars and the cubs, cubs <laughs> and the cougars. We ain't wasting time. You better just do her. Yeah. Let's just stay focused on that now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that that's what started all this. You wanna tell another story, Cheryl? Do you have anything in your head like that's just I don't know. I, I could I could uh, give you a prompt. I need to get some stories to have in my back pocket. I don't have any good like. No, this is like I think of this podcast as just like a fun hang. It's like behind the music, hanging out in the studio, like between takes, you know. Mm. So we can talk about anything. Give me some more prompts, like what? Sure. How about this? How about this? Doesn't have to be a story. Give can can you give me some dating advice? Because when we were in Minneapolis. I had I had dinner with you most of the nights, like before or after the shows. I remember there was a night. Where you were like, I think I was like, oh, I'm like saying too much on a podcast, but I was possibly going to go hang out with somebody. And you were like, at the show, you're like, if you hang out with me and you have dinner with me again after the show, like, it's going to be really sad. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> I was basically like, not hanging out with anybody, you know? Yeah. But you did give me a lot of really good dating advice out there. So maybe there's <laughs> some like dating advice to give in this. Oh. Um, oh, I love being a wingman. That's fun. You're such a good wingman. Definitely better that. than Diego. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Diego would be so <laughs> But. Because I think it's good. Like, if you're seen just being nice to an old lady, then, you know, the younger girls would be like, oh, he must be a good guy. He's not just out yeah. looking for, you know, he can have, like, regular relationships and mm. be a good guy. So. So maybe I'll, ask, I'll just ask dating questions as I play a little piano for us. Well, and um, I think we talked, like, if you really, if you click with somebody, that's a really rare thing. And it's mm. really special. And don't Damn discount you, Cheryl. that. You know? Damn you. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Because uh, time goes by really fast. And you mm-hmm. don't want to lose those opportunities. Should I just overshare on this? You know what I mean? This girl might hear this stuff. You can always edit. You know, Ronnie, would you be down to edit? <laughs> not really. I think you should just... <laughs> just like, no. <laughs> no, I, I won't. Just tell it. 
Nah, there is a. Uh, there was a, there was a girl that I met that really like stuck out, right? And I, it's it's like a rare thing. It, when you travel a lot, you meet a lot of people. And so when you said that, sir, I was like, damn you, because it's like, I just want to live a simple life, you know, be a guy who has an apartment by himself and plays boner jams. <laughs> <laughs> but but now I you know I can't stop thinking about this girl. So so like yeah, what's what's your advice on that? Oh, yeah, pursue it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's that doesn't come along every day. And you don't want to look back 30 years from now and regret and wonder what could have been. This is so beautiful. Holy crap. Oh, my God. This is like, this feels like the, like, end credits or the opening credits to a movie. Like, <laughs> yeah. I want to look back 30 years from now, you know. Um... I did watch Forrest Gump, and I thought about the Forrest and Jenny relationship. Uh huh. How it went from like when they were kids, and they didn't finally like do anything till like they were older, and she had AIDS. Yeah. And yeah. Um. So you don't want to wait until you have AIDS. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love how genuinely you're like no. <laughs> Do it when you don't have AIDS. <laughs> Go talk to the girl. Cause AIDS is definitely out there. <laughs> okay, not so that's not necessarily some definitely... a deal breaker either. No, it's not. A, it's definitely not a deal breaker for me. No. Um, no. Cause I, I know that you've lived. If you have AIDS, you've partied. There's medication now. Yeah, like AIDS is the new herpes, you know? Everyone's got it. You can live with it. Yeah. Ronnie's face says it all. <laughs> yeah. Whoever's listening to this, this is totally CDC approved, FDA approved. <laughs> uh, AIDS is the new herpes. Get out there and have fun. Just writing down stuff that I'm supposed to be cutting out. Yeah, you're saying. <laughs> I feel like on Instagram, the CDC thing shows up now where it's like, click this for the real information. Whenever you talk about COVID or anything. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be that for AIDS on this podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Look at AIDS.com for the real. (laughs) This has been so fun. Yeah. I hope so. um, Oh, it's been so good. It's fun for me. I feel like, yeah, I love how, like you have always such like, a unique and cool perspective to share on stuff and you're funny as fuck. It's great. Um, is there anything you want to plug like where people can follow you shows coming up or things that you want people to know about? Mm, Cheryl soccer mom on Instagram. Is it Cheryl soccer mom? Cheryl, the soccer mom. It's Cheryl soccer mom. No, the awesome y'all. Well, go check it out. Uh, we, thanks Cheryl Anderson. You've been awesome. I've been Jared Guzman. We got our awesome producer, Ronnie Whaley. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Cougars and the cubs, cubs <laughs> and the cougars, we ain't wasting time. You better just do her. All right, what a great episode. Whoa, ending with AIDS. Um <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That happens almost every episode. Every episode we talk about AIDS and we talk about trials that we should move past. But uh, yeah, that was a fun episode. And if you want to support the Patreon and support my future children and uh, because I won't. So I hope you guys do it. Yep. Said a lot right here. But to support them, go to patreon.com backslash bits and beats. (laughs) Again, that's patreon.com backslash bits and beats if you love my kids. Um, and uh, you also get exclusive content on there of uh, like behind the scenes footage of, of the podcast. And Ronnie and I are talking about other little extras we're going to give you guys. So, yeah, do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dude, these intro outro things. We're learning how to do these, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah check out cheryl we're gonna add her socials into this and my socials as well and just thanks for supporting the podcast we're two episodes in let's do this anything else to include here ronnie uh follow us on the new instagram that we have the yeah some beats pod instagram yeah any socials that i forget here uh we'll we'll put on the um what's it called on the youtube link the youtube co- caption 
You're right, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I think All we're right. good. All right. I think we got everything. All I right, so. yo. This has been Joe Rogan. Enjoy <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> this has been Joe Rogan.